What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Sunday special. You already know what we do here on these uh, videos. Basically, I go through the markets and I talk about trade ideas and setups for the week ahead. And I give you guys a little bit of an insight into what I'm thinking uh, for potential trade setups or at least stuff to watch for yourself when looking at the markets. I do want to remind you guys, if you're enjoying my content, make sure to like this video down below if you want to see more videos just like this and subscribe if you're new here so that you get more content like this for free in the future. Okay, so we're going to talk about the uh, we're going to talk about the euro usd first today because i got to show you guys something very very interesting so this move on friday um, came with the news of negative gdp growth in europe so i want to show you this really quick we're just going to pull it up uh, i just pulled up the numbers and so we see that we actually had two consecutive quarters now of negative gdp growth for europe now, this sort of brings back my bearish thesis on euro pairs. Um, I've, been, I've been bearish on the euro, but I took a pause with everything recently because you can go back here and you can see, you know, the last few weeks have been incredibly bullish for the euro uh, as things have really rallied on the hopes for uh, better economic recovery. But with that news just recently, I think that's a bit sobering for the euro. And I think it actually offers some really good trade setups or ideas going into this week. So let's talk about it. Okay, so... Um, we came into price, uh, we, price came up right up to this zone here that we've been watching uh, for a while here on the streams. If you watch my live streams, we've been watching Euro USD as it's risen. And I basically said, you know, I think price is probably headed to 1.215. Um, and I'm not going to pat myself on the back because I didn't, I didn't take this short. I wish I had, but I was just a bit off. So uh, I was planning to, to try and get short on the Euro if price popped up just a bit higher there. Um, we are sort of, we've been in a, a longer term sideways trend here. You can see uh, uh, we've, we've sort of had mixed direction on the euro for the last several uh, months. So anyways, the idea here with this most recent sell-off is that we could have the catalyst here to renew some of that bearish strength that we've been seeing overall in 2021. So ever since 2021 started, the euro dollar has taken some heat. Uh, and we, with this recent rally, I've been looking at it with the, with, uh, you know, googly eyes, like, hey, is there, is there a big short here? Is there opportunities to get short on this? thing. And I do think that there is. So I am looking for uh, shorts going into this week on the euro dollar. I'm not going to short it just because, uh, you know, it started to come down. So I'm going to drop it down to a lower time frame just for a second, you guys. And I want to show you this. So you can see we got this beautiful little uptrend. Congrats to all the bulls that caught this move uh, to the upside in this uh, during this time. Uh, but I think that sellers took over here on last week. And I'm going to talk to you why I think that is. Again, uh, with that fresh uh, news about GDP looking negative and the U.S. dollar sort of on a, a overall strong pullback uh, in an overall uptrend, I think it has potential for the dollar to continue to strengthen. And this euro with that fresh news, I think, has the catalyst it needs to maybe make its way down to 185, uh, so 1 1.185. Um, if that were to happen, there's some significant downside here for the euro. That's 160 pips there, roughly, uh, 150 to 200 pips there to the downside. And if it really gets back to the lows, uh, you know, if price really does roll over and become super bearish, even down to 1.17. So. What I'm looking at when I look at the Euro USD, how do I get involved? Well, uh, I'm not going to sell into just the the downfall here. Uh, I'd probably be a little bit more strategic. I'd probably look for for rebounds. But if there's you know significant resistance that comes into play, and I really like the setup, I could see myself looking to get short this week on the Euro dollar. Now. Any trades that I take, I will share with members inside of the private group. Uh, we did a sale last week, and I want to extend that just to the last few days here. Um, it was supposed to end last Friday, but I, I've had a couple people sending messages that want to get in. So I've left the, the sale open for just the end of today. So if you want to join uh, the private group, there's a 25% off discount code down below in the description. All of my trades get shared in there. We have live chat rooms. There's webinars that are done by our coach, Joe Barreca. He answers questions, works with members. I encourage you, if you have any interest, if you like my trading style, Come trade with us. Come check us out. I think we're worth your time uh, to check out and see if uh, it's a fit for you. So there's a link down below with the description and a promo code for you guys who support the content here. So again, I'm leaving that open for a limited time. So now is your shot if you want to get in there for a cheaper price. Okay, so that's the euro dollar. Let's move on to something else. We'll take a look at the pound dollar here for a moment. Um, the pound dollar looking real interesting on Friday as well as price started to really plummet. The pound got weak and I'm actually... 
uh, bullish on the pound. So looking into this next week, I am actually looking for opportunities to get long on GBP pairs. Some of my favorite ones that I'm going to be watching personally are going to be uh, GBP US dollar, GBP uh, Swiss franc, and then um, also Euro GBP. Now, last week I got stopped out on Euro GBP, but I'm going to look for an opportunity to try and get short on that pair again uh, as I favor the pound and short the Euro based on what I just said about the Euro's double dip recession potential there, uh, or, or I guess not potential, it actually happened, right? There's a double dip. Um, we're seeing a, a negative uh, GDP growth for two quarters in a row, which is pretty negative. So uh, I am bearish on the Euro. I am bullish on the pound. Um, and so when I'm looking at this, we are sort of range bound on the pound against the dollar, but some of the other currency pairs out there with the pound look a bit more appetizing to me. So uh, some of the ones that I'll mention are pound dollar, pound yen, pound Swiss franc. All of those look pretty healthy for upside. Um, well, I guess not not as much pound dollar, but uh, regardless, I do think that with the pound pulling back here, there might be some discount buys going on with the with the the pound movement going into this week. Now, please note, I can be wrong. I'm not right all the time when it comes to markets, and you know, newer traders out there who are watching my content, I don't want them to get the wrong idea uh, that oh, you know, Nick said the pound could be a discount here. It's got to go up. It can't go down. It absolutely could go down. And in that case, I would adapt and look for new opportunities to try and set up. The point. In successful trading is not to be right all the all the time. It's to let it really work for you when you are right, and don't let it destroy you when you're wrong. Right, tight stops. You know, protecting capital the best you can, using small position sizes, all of those magical quote unquote uh, tools that we have at our disposal to keep ourselves protected in the markets. They go a long way. So when I look at the pound dollar, I like this demand zone. You've had multiple, you know, this this has been an interesting spot on the price chart here multiple times. So keep an eye on that. I do like the pound dollar potentially for some long side action there. Uh, but again, what I mentioned was the GBP Swiss franc and GBP, uh, you know, yen look interesting to me. So you've had this strong uptrend. Now we're getting some pullback, uh, a bit bigger of a pause here on the uptrend. But, um, you know, if this uptrend does continue, Arguably, you know, if, if we look at this in two months and it's rallied back, uh, you're going to be getting some serious discounts in this region here, at least in my opinion. Now, again, like I said, these are just trades that I'm thinking about taking. These are not things that I'm telling you uh, to go do yourself. So another one is pound yen. We'll take a look at this one really quick. And you can see this one's been interesting as well. Um, you know, lots of strength this week on the pound yen. We gave some of that back on Friday. Uh, and for my for my pound yen bulls uh, who were inside of the community, you already know uh, I got stopped out of a trade here. Uh, barely got stopped out, but I knew some members uh, who got, I got a lot of messages from members who said, you know, hey, Nick, I stayed in that trade and it ended up being a massive runner for me. And to those of you guys, I have to congratulate you again. We talked about it on stream last week, but if you're watching this and you're a member and you caught that pound yen trade, then a big congratulations to you. You played it better than I did, and I'm happy for you. You don't catch every move in the market, unfortunately. I wish I did. It would be an easy ride, but um, to the people who did play that better than I did, then huge congratulations to you and awesome pound yen movement there. So uh, going into the week, though, I think that there is some renewed opportunities for pound yen bullishness somewhere along the way here. I'm not gonna rush to conclusions because, uh, let's actually remove that. Um, I'm not gonna rush to conclusions here because we are sort of in a limbo spot. We're not at the extreme highs, we're not at the extreme lows yet. Uh, but if price gives us a chance to get long here somewhere along the week, uh, in, the, in the next week, you know, maybe there's some opportunity to look for bullishness on the pound. I think that there's upside for the pound going into the next several uh, weeks to months. So I will be looking for it and trying to capitalize it on it. Like I said, if I take any trades, you guys in the membership group will know about it. Okay, so let's look at gold because um, gold has been fairly interesting as well. Gold held this level like Stonewall Jackson. This level did not want to break here this week. We watched it multiple times last week. Um, now, I do want to point out one big thing that we have coming in the next week that I forgot to mention at the beginning. I should have done that. We have NFP this week, non-farm payroll. This is big news for unemployment in the U.S. Now, the reason that that impacts markets is because, you know, a lot of the world follows the U.S. economy. Um, you know, Canada does a lot of trade with the U.S. Mexico does a lot of trade with the U.S. You know, the whole world uh, is impacted by the U.S. because of how large its economy is, similar to China, right? So when NFP comes out, it's a big deal for markets around the world. 
because it can have a ripple effect. So unemployment uh, for the U.S. is going to be coming out on Friday of this week. So keep an eye on that. That definitely has impact uh, has impacted the market in the past and could impact it this week as well. And it has uh, some very big potential for moving gold. So for the gold bulls out there, um, this level held really nicely last week. Uh, if price can get a bounce off that and can rally towards the end of the week here, then absolutely could be, you know, room for upside. That would be dependent on some U.S. dollar weakness most likely. Um, again, because the U.S. dollar is going to be sort of in focus this week. If NFP is very good for the dollar, you could see gold push lower, finally have that uh, strength to push through this zone of support. And vice versa. If the U.S. dollar comes out with some very weak news, the gold market could get a bid here, and we could push up to that level of 1810, which is the short-term target that I have on this movement up. I've talked about that a few times on live streams. By the way, if you're not following our live streams, there's two ways you can do it. You can either come by at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern U.S. time. You can tune in to this channel, and I'm going live here, or you can basically um, just click the, the subscribe button and then also the notification bell next to it and you'll get notified whenever I go live. So either way works, but if you want to uh, join in live during the week for, for you know when the markets are moving ideas, then definitely make sure to do one of those things. Okay, so yeah, um, with gold doing that, I think that there could be some, some moves here throughout the week that could lead to 1810. Uh, I do still think that price wants to retest or at least retest this area here. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not super bullish on gold. I'm just saying that I think from like just where the technicals are looking, I think it has room to go to the upside. Now, I do want to look at the, the COT reports here. So let's go look at this. So I'm going to go over to the site, a1trading.com. This is my website. And if you just go over to COT reports right here, we can go check out gold and just see what the COT reports have to say about gold. So I'm going to scroll down here and look at the non-commercials for this week. So you can see there's been a little bit of fresh selling on the gold market. So this actually keeps me with my bearish thesis on gold. So I'm not a big fan of gold uh, here in 2021 because of all the sort of, uh, you know, as things continue to subside with the pandemic and things are less and less scary, I think that there's just not as much of a, a argument for gold at this time. When things are scary, like back in 2020, when they were more scary, I guess, um, you know, there was a big, big movement into gold. People were like unsure about things, you know, maybe rapid inflation could be around the corner, who knows? Gold was very much in favor. Uh, in in favor. Now, when we look in 2021, things have subsided for gold, and we see it actually making a move lower. So, and you can actually see the COT reports back that. So, if anything, I'm looking at gold and saying, well, you know, if it pops up into this area, those look like fresh, juicy sell levels for me. Uh, expecting a push lower on gold. Now, I don't say that you know lightly because I do own some gold as a long-term investment. Personally, I bought some right around here during this time. Um, you know, watched it go back to break even. And now it's actually up a bit. But the idea there is I think that, you know, in the short term, maybe gold pops up here. But I do think that sellers are probably waiting at some of these key zones. So we will talk about that throughout the week. As you guys know, on streams, we always talk about gold because people always want to hear about it. So we will definitely make sure to do some of that. Let's look at some more things here. Let's see what else we can get into. So we looked at that. We looked at the euro dollar. We looked at the pound dollar and some of the pound pairs. Let's also look at dollar yen here. See what's going on with pound yen. So the pound yen was very strong this week. We had a lot of push into the pound dollar. Uh, sorry, the pound yen. And actually, I do want to. I'm saying pound yen, dollar yen. Sorry, I'm getting all mixed up, you guys. DXY. I want to look at the U.S. dollar here for a moment before we come back to the USDJPY. So we did have a very bullish week for, uh, or at least a bullish into the week for the dollar index. So things were a bit mixed starting out, and then um, you know with the FOMC news we had last week on Wednesday, sort of saw some downward pressure. But then by the end of the week, the dollar came roaring back. So where we're at with this? Well, um, you know on the four-hour chart you've got here's the DXY. So we've got. We do technically still have, if this can hold a new higher low, which is bullish for the dollar, uh, we've sort of broken this downward trend, which is also very good for the U.S. dollar technically, right? Um, you know, you're looking at a you're looking at a level here. Let me redraw this trend line because this trend line is pretty pretty rough. Let's see if we can just do this. There we go. 
there's that uh, trend line drawn fresh. Again, the thing about, I mentioned on stream, I had a rant about trend lines. The thing about trend lines that makes them difficult is because people can draw them differently. And, you know, depending on how you draw a trend line, it can look very, very different. So, um, you know, trend lines are, are a, a just one tool in the box, in my opinion. They're not the end all be all. Some people love them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like to use them just as a basic uh, idea, but I don't use them as like, you know, my reason for entering completely. So anyways, um, when we're looking at uh, the dollar index here, you know, you look at this trend line here, if you're drawing it this way, right? You had some nice downtrend structure, price moving lower overall, and then finally breaking out of that by the end of the week. So that looks bullish for the US dollar. It looks like we have some upside there. Um, you know, if price does really get going, if, if you know, you start to see dollar movements that are just huge to the upside, I would expect price to probably make its way back up to the previous high there and maybe even push on from there. Um, so we'll see if that can happen. In terms of the USD JPY though, let's see. Um, so price pulled back to this level. It really broke it this week. So I thought we were going to continue lower, uh, honestly. But then we, we rallied back towards the end of the week with that, that fresh dollar strength. And it does look like the bullish train is still on. In fact, even retesting that same spot, finding demand and going higher. So if this stays strong, like I said, I think an easy, uh, an easy target to consider would be the previous high there. We can go ahead and mark that on the chart there. Draw that out. Change that to a nice pink color and there you go. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that with the dollar yen, not a ton of, uh, you know, beautiful entries in, in, in my view anywhere time, any, anywhere uh, soon here, but I do think that if price does stay str uh, strong, probably headed up to that one, 110, 111 range uh, that we were previously at. So that does look like uh, it could be on the cards here for this week on the dollar yen. If things do continue getting stronger for the dollar, again, gonna be very impacted by NFP, of course, because strong unemployment numbers for the dollar could lead it higher and vice versa. Weak could lead it lower, okay? So that's what I'm looking at on the dollar yen. Let's do one more chart. We'll take a look at something like AUD. USD. So Aussie dollar has also been a very interesting currency pair because you can see towards the end of the week, it totally just fell through the floor and completely sold off uh, here going into going into the weekend. Now, what you'll notice also is these lower time frame levels completely got just shut down. Buyers who were trying to jump in there probably just got, you know, stopped out fairly quickly. This trend line here broke the downside. And I mentioned um, on our live streams when this was happening, I said probably uh, going to retest this area here. And even, you know, with this fresh, fresh sell pressure here, could see a move down to the previous low. So let's look at that. So you know, watching, watching Aussie dollar going into this week, the thing that I would say that's most interesting to me would be, okay, well, if we hold this, if you're, if you're super bullish on the Aussie dollar, this could just be a pullback and opportunity to get long and to continue higher. But if that US dollar stays strong, we very well could see dollar, uh, Aussie dollar going right on down to here. So there's a couple ways you could play it. If you're mixed opinion on the Aussie dollar, if you don't really care which way it goes, and you don't have a strong bias either fundamentally or whatever, um, you know, something like this, watching for the break, looking for the intraday pullback and trying to go for uh, a downward move. There's some nice, there's some nice pip movement there. That's what, uh, 100, 150 pips there to the downside, just retesting the previous low. So that's option number one. Um, you know, if price does hold this, my favorite setup that I've been mentioning with the Aussie dollar is a break above this. So I probably wouldn't trade this zone right here personally, but I do like this idea. Looking for that breakout because I think that this gives you some really good risk reward. Check this out. So if we get strong this week, on the Aussie dollar, or maybe the week after, whenever. My number one setup would be, you know, breaking through that that recent structure high, looking for the retest, and trying to go long, looking for the continuation back up to 0.8. In that case, you've got some really good upside. You know, that's almost 200 pips of upside on a break. And then you gotta remember, this is a currency pair that's not incredibly high, uh, high in terms of pip movements per day. So, um, you know, Aussie dollar making a move like that could be a really nice move for the pair. So keep an eye on that. That's my number one setup on Aussie dollar. If it happens, I will probably take that trade. 
uh, and be looking out for it. Of course, if I take the trade, it will go out to members inside of the private group. With that said, you guys, if you are not already in the group and you have an interest, like I said, today is the last chance to get that promo code 25% off of the gold membership. So check it out down below in the description. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. I appreciate all the support and all the great comments lately. You guys are great and we'll see you back in the next video. See you later.